no one has seen this before, to be honest. This is actually my first version, but I changed everything after a class called Immersive Storytelling. And in that class, we just went to Florida Disney World for a week. At that time, we have to observe how Disney designed their whole amusement park. How do they design their visual cues and their basic architecture? texture, anything, their food, even the trash can. So I found that they use every kind of sensory in a coherent design system. And their goal is to make the audience, the visitors there, to be more engaged with their story. It occurred to me that I should ask myself if my visual work is an amusement ride in Disney, is it good enough? for the reader to be engaged with the story in Brooklyn 99. Because my goal is to let anyone who have or haven't seen Brooklyn 99 to understand the beauty, the humor of it. That's my goal. So hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Secrets of the Viz. Today, I have a special guest with me, Ishan, who is the top three student winners of this year's IMVIS. She did a visualization on Brooklyn 99. The series is pure gold. Uh, it's a crime comedy show. I think probably started in like 2013 or something, but it's very hilarious. It's out on Netflix, but I'll leave it to Ishan to walk us through this amazing TV series and her Viz that she did to visualize it. So over to you, Ishan, to do a intro about yourself. Hello, everyone. I'm Ishan. You can also call me Sandy. And really appreciate the opportunity to share my work. Right now, I'm in the United States, and I'm originally from Taiwan, and I just graduated this May in a degree about data analysis and the visualization, and also a little bit about human-computer interaction. I started my Tableau journey last year in 2024 spring when I took a class called Data Visualization with Tableau. My professor is Chess McCoy, and he's probably the only professor at my university who teaching Tableau. And then this year, he encouraged me to participate in the Iron Bay student competition. So, yeah. Here we are. That's amazing. This totally proves that you can do a lot in one year because this is very well done in terms of the structure, the storytelling, and which is why you got the top three. So maybe to start off, walk us through a little bit on the design inspiration. I noticed the font for the Brooklyn 99 is quite similar to the font that they use in the opening titles and all, but the rest of it is probably something that you had to iterate through different variations and everything. Yeah, in this competition, all the data has been prepared. That is IMDb TV data. So you can do whatever you like. You can focus on a genre. You can focus on a producer. You can also focus on actress or actors. I start to review winners' work from last year and how they approach this topic because we are using the same data sets. I also emphasize whether the topic have enough perspective for me to analyze because for the grading of this competition, the analysis is one of the most important. So I settled down with uh, Brooklyn 99 and one of the reasons is that's a way I improve English, to be honest. Brooklyn 99 is a comedy related to detectives and NYPD. So I started to think of, I can make a detective crew wall that would be awesome and cool but the visual doesn't look good so there are several trying like i have tap here i also put some screenshots from the tv to find what's their visual cues so i just collect as many as possible and that's how i start brainstorming you will see several iterations on my Figma. No one has seen this before, to be honest. This is actually my first version. Because if you see the winners from the past years, many of them are using like the long page storytelling skill. So I was thinking I would like to do something different, somehow mimic how Chris Westlake did, which is a horizontal and more focused on having the 
interaction on the same screen instead of scrolling. Then I just designed like this. You can click each menu and you can switch to the different visualization. But I changed everything after a trip to Disney World. I had a class called Immersive Storytelling. And in that class, we have the field trip. Uh, we just went to Florida Disney World for a week. At that time, we have to observe how Disney designed their whole amusement park. How do they design their visual cues and their basic architecture, anything, their food, even the trash can. So I found that they use every kind of sensory in a coherent design system. And their goal is to make the visitors more engaged with their story. It occurred to me that I should ask myself if my visual work is an amusement ride in Disney, is it good enough for the reader to be engaged with the story in Brooklyn 99? Because my goal is to let anyone who have or haven't seen Brooklyn 99 to understand the beauty, the humor of it. That's my goal. So I started thinking in the way where Disney staff designed their amusement park. Like if I separate different visualization in the different menu, does that mean the information is somehow broken? The scrolling is probably a good way to let the user read from the top in a way that they understand the story. So that's how I transfer from my first to this current version. Then I started to add some visual design like the police line because blue and yellow is a good combination to be really eye-catching. And then I put visual cues related to detectives like the bullet here and also the siren as my information cues. That's a lot to cover and I'm really excited because I think in terms of thematic design, you've nailed it. I love the fact that you have the police tape at the top and the bottom. So it brings a story that this entire chunk in between is like the crime scene that you want to analyze for your audience. And that is very on theme. You had a lot of iterations and thank you so much for showing us that dashboard that you haven't shown anyone. That is a true embodiment of how people iterate through different stages, especially for a competition like Iron Viz. I know some folks basically restarted from scratch, maybe two weeks into the month. I'm very jealous, by the way, that you get to spend a week in Disneyland just as a follow-up from your storytelling course. I think that is a very unique way of teaching data visualization because Disney is a genius when it comes to storytelling and how they put visual cues, sound cues, and the whole package. They've been around for a very long time. So I want to know a little bit more about your trip to Disneyland, like what was the structure of that okay. assignment? Oh yeah, in the first half of the lesson, we learn how to write a novel. So we have to create a character. We have to create a scene, the setting, and to think about the words of wisdom we want the audience to take. Then in the second half of the class, we learn how to physically design a ride. We even took some classes online produced by the staff in Disney. They teach us how they create a amusement park from scratch. I realized they take care of a lot of details, like even the trash can, the chair, and anything that you took for granted, they are actually hidden with a lot of design details. And one of the most important is cue experiences, how to make them feel less annoyed and more excited for their next ride. Like you can design a little exhibition about the story, for example, Beauty and the Beast. So you will see several decorations from the city and it just comes into life. So even though it takes you about one hour to wait in the line, you are still enjoying in the queue. So although that's no direct connection to our Tableau visual work, I feel like you can somehow gather inspiration from how Disney designed their physical amusement park. That's very interesting because when I was in 
Hong Kong Disneyland just a couple of weeks back with the kids. We went to queue for the Ironman experience, which is basically a hydraulic chair where you sit and there's a screen playing and stuff like that. But while you were queuing for the ride, there were a lot of exhibits, like you said, on the Stark industry about Anthony Stark and like the inventions that he created over the years. I mean, it's all fiction, but it's very well done because it keeps park goers a bit more engaged. And I think I would disagree with your statement that this does not translate to data visualization because a lot of this subtle design elements are very intentional because we want to make the audience feel a certain way. This is also true when we're building dashboards or visualizations because design is very intentional in all the little things that you do. It could be a different yeah. font size, a different color, a placement of a text, or even a lump icon that you have for more information. Those are very intentional. And I think that translates from the lessons that you learned from your visit to Disney World. Really appreciate <laughs> how you understand my points because I couldn't find someone who can realize my learning from Disneyland to visualization. It's really hard to tell people who are not understand both Tableau and the Disney experience. I think design is something that we often take for granted, but there are so many elements within design that you don't notice until someone points it out to you. Like, especially when you mm. think about in a business setting, you have different audiences. It's all about the user experience. You have people from sales, marketing, HR, finance, all of them have different experiences and you want to cater that experience differently from everyone. So obviously someone who is very data oriented, you want to maybe put more numbers because they would understand more, but someone from marketing might not be very familiar with numbers. So you need to add a little bit more charts to show them the trends and slowly inject the meaning of numbers to them so that they can understand. So there's a lot of these different ways that you can engage the users. And these are lessons that you can learn from design. Yeah, totally. No matter if it's a physical design or digital design. So I think to wrap it off, I wanted to ask you, who's your favorite character in Brooklyn 99? That's a so good question. But I would say I like Terry the most. He's a soldier in the policeman squad. And he's so funny. He like to call himself Terry instead of I am blah, blah, blah. And he has mm. a strong characteristics that make his characters stand out. Definitely. I think it's kind of the pivot points for most of the conversations that happen around the police station. For me, it's Jake, but because it's just silly. Like sometimes when oh. we watch a TV series, I don't know. I, I resonate with silly characters because I think they're just funny. Is there any other TV series that you've recently been engaged in or you want to promote? <laughs> Have you heard about a TV series called The Man on the Inside? Super recommend that. It just has seven episodes. It's about a senior. He retired and his wife just died. He got nothing to do. So mm -hmm. he accidentally got a detective job and he has to become the new resident in an aging center to find out who stole one of the residents' necklace. So it's a story about family, dementia, and life. But it's fun. It's a little bit like detective comedy. Yeah. Mm. So I haven't seen this series before, but I recognize that guy, Ted Denson. He's from another series that I love called The Good Place. Not too sure if you've heard uh, of it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes, yes. That's <laughs> the same character, yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. So I think we have everything we need from your visit today, Ishan. Uh, thank you so much again for walking us through your process, your design inspiration, and also that little story about how a trip to Disneyland helped you to fortify your understanding on data visualization and storytelling and how you can apply that kind of design cues to business dashboards. That is really interesting. And again, I'm so jealous that I didn't get to do that during my studies. I hope everyone learned something from this and I'll see everyone in the next episode. Thank you. Thank you.